is up guys, my name is Armand and you just heard me train wreck. So train wrecking is of course caused by failing to beat match correctly. When you're bringing in the new song into the mix, you've got to make sure that the beats are locked in and synced up with the beats in the first song. You can check out my beat matching tutorial on my YouTube channel. This video is not actually going to be how to teach you how to uh, do a beat match, rather it's going to be one, how to avoid train wrecking and two, what to do if you do train wreck to try to minimize the pain. So as you just heard, train wrecking sounds pretty awful. The beats are just fighting with one another and it sounds like a bunch of boots in your laundry dryer. <laughs> and believe me, train wrecking live in a club before a crowd is a DJ's worst nightmare. So let's get to it. Number one, how can we avoid train wrecking? Obviously the thing to do here is to be good at beat matching. Uh, but here is my uh, top tip for making sure that you don't train wreck by uh, causing an adjustment on the platter that's the wrong direction when you're trying to actually fix the beat match and adjust it and make it better. Uh, how do you not make it worse by accident? Well, a lot of DJs that are playing on turntables start up with their track in their headphone with the second track that they're going to mix in and they uh, get it beat matched and then they just start mixing it in. Well, what you should do to avoid any problems later is you should pay close attention to whether the timing of these songs is exact, exactly the same that they're gonna stay together, or is one song a little faster or a little slower. Listen to it for 20 or 30 seconds. Give it time to slip out of sync if it does have a slight speed variation over the other song. And here's the critical part. Pay attention to which direction you have to move the platter on the turntables in order to get it fixed. So do you need to advance it forward because the new song is too slow? Or do you need to uh, move it backwards because uh, the new song is too fast and it's uh, racing ahead of the first song? So make a mental note of which way you need to adjust the platter once it slips a little bit out of sync. And that way later when you're actually bringing in the live mix, you don't need to guess. You know which way to move the platter and that's gonna make it so that once the beats are a little bit slipping out of sync, you can fix it easily and you're not gonna guess and have a 50-50 shot only of spinning the platter the correct way. If you spin it the wrong way, you're actually gonna end up making the uh, beats go more out of sync and if you're busy doing something else, playing with effects or something like that, uh, it's gonna get more difficult and maybe you're gonna not be able to uh, recover and you're going to cause a train wreck by moving the platter too aggressively in the other direction because you you know you freak out and you overcompensate okay so that's tip number one get all of the information and find out which direction you have to move the platter uh, second thing is make small movements don't overcompensate even if you think you're going to train wreck or you think the beats are sounding really out of sync and they're really bad well, guess what? Most people in the room aren't DJs and they're not gonna hear it as early as you do. So they're going to uh, be busy dancing, partying, talking with friends. So try not to freak out, stay calm and make small adjustments on the jog wheels. Oftentimes I see DJs get into a train wreck situation because they hear, oh, the beats are out of sync. I've gotta make a fast, big adjustment on the jog wheel and maybe they spin it too far. Maybe they spin it in the right direction, but they spin it so far that now the beats are out of sync the other way around and now that's confusing. They may not know that they've done this and they'll spin it some more this way and boom, you're train wrecking next thing you know. So now let's go to the actual turntables. We'll do a couple train wreck examples and we'll see what can be done using effects, volume fades and backspins to try to make it sound a little better, minimize the pain and make the best out of a bad situation. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> 